Okay, good morning. Um, my name is Vicente. Pretty much every one of you already know me. No, uh, no, 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 who not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm a new, I'm a new uh, person around. Yeah. Yes, you're young. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I bring young blood with me today. So yeah, uh, together with Christian, uh, which is a, a colleague of mine in, in this graphic, we are based in, in Catalonia, in Spain. So we'll show you uh, how we are creating uh, React native uh, applications. Uh, just notice that this is, and I made it very clear, this is a one-on-one uh, session. So it's a very basic session one, because it's uh, amazing the amount of things that you can have with that. I mean, only if we have to speak about React, we can fill two or three hours. Then there is another couple tools that we'll see that can fill also a couple more hours. So that will be very basic. It's just an introduction of the tooling that we are using and to give you some ideas on how you can explore those tools. We'll see some code uh, at the end. Actually, I will do the easy things, which is the talking and enjoying you and he will do the coding, which is the difficult part. Uh, so, well, I hope you enjoy what we are going to show you. Well, obviously the first thing is showing uh, appreciation to our sponsors. And this is a bit the agenda that we are doing today. First thing is what is React Native, how it compares to just uh, React JS. What is the differences, what is the relationship between the two, and how they uh, both compare. Uh, a tool that we are using called Expo, which is not directly related to, not, sorry, not, not built by the same uh, company that uh, does React, which is Facebook. So that's an independent project, but makes uh, building React native applications very easy. A bit of how to integrate uh, an application with the NN, mainly on the side of authentication, we will not be going deep into that because uh, on itself that's a session uh, doing the authentication using JWT. And then uh, I'll switch it uh, to Christian. He'll show you how to do the basic setup uh, for your tooling, how to set up uh, your computer in order to do uh, developments uh, with or without uh, Expo. Uh, some uh, short demos uh, using will mainly be using some examples that are already available on the web, uh, showing how uh, how you can do these kind of uh, applications, and giving you some pointers or where you can uh, go to explore more information about that. So the first thing is. Uh, before going to React Native, uh, my first point is, uh, what is React, in fact? Anyone here uh, using React, actually? Few? Well, so I'll give an intro on what is React, first thing. So React, well, first of thing, uh, the, both tools are uh, frameworks built uh, by uh, Facebook, okay? So they are open source, they are proven that they are uh, good, solid, uh, solid working, so uh, we made a choice to uh, be using React instead of Angular, just when we were uh, choosing our uh, user interface tooling for that, and I think that I'm pretty happy with how it's working so far. It's, it's different than Angular, I'm not an expert in Angular, but uh, I can tell you for sure that building user interfaces with uh, React or with <coughs> just uh, HTML, JS and the DOM it's, uh, it's day and night. I mean, it's uh, highly uh, recommendable that you use something like that. So I really like the approach that we're using for, uh, with that. And all the new modules that we're using, it's mainly uh, React on the client side and uh, the Java, sorry, the, the services framework on the server side. So it makes a, a clear separation of concerns. What is the business logic and what is the client side logic? And it's uh, amazing the, the kind of things that you can do with that. So React. React.js mainly is that. It's a library for creating user interfaces. It's not a framework to do everything. Its main focus is user interfaces. And it's there where it really shines uh, React. So probably if you compare that to Angular, then you, know, you probably know more about me than that. It's different. Angular is much a more generalistic uh, framework. Yes. Here it's, you can consider that it's mostly for user interfaces. 
and that's why we are using that uh, here. So the other quite important thing about React is, is how it works. It's mainly declarative, so you don't tell how to do things. You tell them uh, what you want to do, what you want to show on the screen. So you want to see a, a component in there, so you declare that component, and with very few logic, uh, you leave it up to the uh, React engine to refresh uh, your screens and to make a transitions from states very easy. The other thing that I forgot to put it here is that React is based on kind of an estate machine. So they have some, um, how can I say that? Uh, there is two important pieces in React that you need to know. One is the state that uh, you maintain on your application, and the other is what they call the props, which is the properties that you pass between the screens, which is the main infrastructure that you really need to build a React app. Uh, state and props, that's basically it. The other thing that is important on React is what they call the virtual DOM. I'm not really that much into that uh, on the side of performance, but the explanation they say is that when you manage uh, the DOM using uh, normal JavaScript, uh, jQuery, whatever, that's uh, very, uh, it's not very cost effective. So there is a lot of performance uh, issues in there. So what the approach that they took on React is that they extracted the, the, the browser DOM into a virtual DOM. So everything you do in React is done, let's say that, in that in-memory DOM. And then they only apply the changes from that virtual thing into the browser. So the performance gain that they are saying you get uh, on using this approach is really a, a, an interesting approach. So the point about that is that everything on React is done in that in kind of uh, in memory uh, DOM, and then only the changes <coughs> that they they detect in the virtual DOM are transferred into the actual browser. Component based. That's a good. Uh, that's for me one of the best uh, things about React. You can get uh, a lot of different components uh, around. There is a lot of uh, people working on React. So nowadays you can have uh, components about pretty much everything you can uh, need. And that's also another very uh, interesting thing that makes your code much uh, neat, much cleaner. The moment you start working on React, you switch into component componentizing, if that exists even, uh, componentizing your code into the smallest possible components. So the reuse on the components it's one of the, for me, one of the greatest things about this framework. You can create uh, very small components that can then be reused all across your applications. And that's the same thing that uh, DNN is using, for example, in the persona bar. Okay? So that's a, that's a very interesting approach that uh, you need to consider when using these tools. The, the smaller the components you create, the better. Because then the communication between the components, it's very easy and very uh, natural to grow based on that. And the final thing probably about uh, uh, React is what is uh, JS. Uh, that's not really a requirement, but that's something that is highly uh, recommended, which is the JS, uh, JSX, oops, sorry, it's not here. Okay, this is uh, JSX. It's uh, kind of uh, JavaScript uh, on asteroids. So it's not really JavaScript, but it looks barely familiar if you're using JavaScript. It's much more uh, mm, type oriented in the sense that you have uh, your classes. Uh, this is the, uh, the constructor. Here you define, that is what I was telling you, the state. This is a very simple code that we have from another project. This is where you define your state machine, uh, where, well, not, not really the state machine, the state uh, variables that you want to maintain in your screen. Then you have, this is kind of the entry point. If you are doing web, uh, ASP.NET web forms, that would be your page load, okay? And then you only need another one thing, which is the render. And that is where you do all your user interface. So with very minimal code in this place here, React will take care of rendering all the things that you are pretending to do with this screen. So 
well, I don't have any component here, but you pretty much see another thing, which is that, for example, this piece here. This is code inter inter the uh, the in 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 the middle of the HTML. So when you write uh, JSX, is a, a mix of HTML and code, kind of thing, something like uh, Razor, kind of. Okay, so it's very natural to provide uh, some uh, extra features on your uh, on your user interface by using this approach. Maybe at the beginning it feels a bit unnatural to mix uh, different concerns here, which is a logic and uh, HTML. But after a while, you feel very naturally doing these kind of things. Some people say that this is one of the, the flaws in this approach, that you are mixing too many things into a single place. I don't quite agree on that because, I mean, we are using this approach in, in Razors and in other places. Uh, so I kind of like this approach. Uh, still, it's, it's a bit uh, different from what we are using from what we are used in different uh, scenarios but to me uh, after a while it really feels natural building user interfaces like that i mean we are still maintaining uh, web forms applications and after a while when i need to make a change in the user interface i really uh, wish everything we have was already migrated to this thing it makes really much much easier to maintain uh, user interfaces So that's React.js. Notice one thing here. React.js uh, is built using, uh, well, actually, that's not required. JS6 is not required to uh, build uh, React uh, applications. But it's much more easier to uh, use uh, React.js than just using plain JavaScript. If you, you were using plain JavaScript, you would be using something like, for example, uh, this thing here. Let me see if I can find. Can I duplicate that? Yeah. I don't see what. Okay, yeah. Okay, for example, that's another way of doing uh, JavaScript. Uh, sorry, well, actually, this is uh, JSX either. I wanted to show you another way. Well, it's not here, really. Anyway, my point was that uh, you can do the same thing that you're doing uh, with uh, JSX with plain uh, JavaScript. It only makes it a bit harder and not so natural to use. So my recommendation is to use uh, JSX. Some people use, for example, um, what's the name? Uh, type ty TypeScript. TypeScript, exactly. That's another way of doing that that makes it uh, easier to work on that kind of platform. Can you use TSX instead of JSX? What? Can you use TSX or the TypeScript? Yeah, 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 Thank absolutely. You. Yeah, yeah, that's not required. So obviously, JSX uh, at the very end compiles into JavaScript. So if you use TypeScript, you would use a different compiler, compiles into JavaScript, and that's it. So yeah, for sure. So the idea here is, uh, again, notice that you, when you write components, at the very end, this thing translates into HTML. So what they did is, it, why don't we use the same approach, but instead of translating into HTML, why don't we translate, compile into native, uh, native applications? So that is what React Native is. That is a framework for building uh, native applications using the same uh, paradigm as they use for uh, browser applications. So the difference here is that in one side, we have our uh, React compiling into uh, HTML plus uh, CSS. And here, it compiles, in a way, into na native uh, UI uh, calls. And that's the important piece here also. This is not a hybrid uh, application. It's not like, for example, what's the name, Ionic or Cordova, or that kind of things. This is not native code. So whatever you do here, at the very end, it translates directly 
into API calls for the platform that you're using, uh, whether it is uh, iOS or Android. So in theory, the performance gain that you, that you have by using this approach is much better than uh, using other technologies. The other good thing about this is that the feeling that you get on your applications is much more natural. That's not a browser uh, application inside uh, the, uh, the mobile. That's really a native application. The only thing here, and the good thing is that you use the, the, the familiar technologies that we know, which is uh, JavaScript, and in that case, JSX. So if you come from the world of React, it's very uh, natural to make the transition to this uh, paradigm here. Even though, and that's, that's probably the, well, again, sorry, uh, the components, the, the same paradigm, the, the component details, uh, well, whatever, the components that you use in one place, it's the same idea here, okay? So the same way you build uh, browser applications, you build native applications. The only problem is that obviously uh, there is no code reuse. So don't think that you create a React JS application, you put that on the browser and it runs. That's not, that's not it, just it. I mean, it's completely different. It's only the, the mindset, the, the, the idea of working, the tooling if you want. But all the components are completely different because the components here are na native components. So again, there is plenty of components around, but they are really native components. When you call in, when you use those components, you are calling into the native APIs of the platform, be it uh, iOS or uh, or Android. So mainly, what you're using here is the knowledge reuse. That's what they say. This is not call reuse from React.js. This is the knowledge. This is the the way of doing things. Okay. And for example, sorry, no. Okay, as, the, as I was saying, as React.js compiles into uh, HTML or CSS, uh, React Native renders components using uh, API calls. So, for example, when you're doing a, a React.js application and you're using a dip, you have to switch your mindset, and when you're doing React Native, you use a view. Okay? So uh, a span would be a text, uh, a list box uh, would be a list view, sorry, a list would be a list view, EMG would be an image. You need to change your mindset that this is not really HTML. And again, this is not a hybrid application way of doing things. So it's not that you're writing HTML plus JavaScript, you're writing React plus JavaScript. And the components are specific for uh, native. The good thing about that is that most of those components, then you don't see that, but the view uh, in uh, Android, it translates to, a, I think it's a UI uh, view or something like that, and in iOS, it will be what is used in the native APIs for iOS. So by using some common uh, components, you are most of the time uh, maintaining 90% of your application can be portable to both uh, platforms. And only when you need to go into real deep native calls, which might be different from the platforms, only then you need to switch to uh, using native code. But for most applications, or I would say business applications, which is what we are doing, 100% uh, of the code is completely reusable from iOS and Android. Absolutely everything. Okay? But still, we come from a world which, uh, at least me personally, I'm used to use uh, Visual Studio, click, point, run, and everything is very smooth and very uh, easy to do that. That's a bit, uh, bit more tricky here, okay? You need to set up all the environments, you need to go to the command line and uh, use our friendly... Uh, uh, where is that thing? Friendly command line uh, interface, okay? That kind of things that I don't quite like. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my personal choice. There is another tool which is called Expo. Uh, it has nothing to do with the people that created uh, React, but it's a very, very nice tool. I mean, it makes working with React applications, React native applications, very easy. 
It, it's like a point and click as we are used to do. And not only that, but it provides a set of tools that make the maintenance and the improvement on the tools that you do absolutely easy to, to do. And again, for now, this is free and open source. They say that maybe in the future, they will think about a way of uh, monetize the investment here. So probably providing extra features that you would subscribe to and pay for. But for the moment, everything is completely free. So a couple of things that they uh, have here. The first thing is the Expo client. You can go into the, uh, you want to try that, you can go into the, um, into Expo, so this is Expo, okay? Uh, if you go into, you have iOS, go into the Mac store or in the Android store and you will see the, you will get the client, the Expo client there. You install this application and from there you can run uh, projects built by, uh, built by Expo. I'll go into that a bit more later. Another one is the Expo CLI, that's uh, another uh, common mind interface, so uh, all the tooling that you need to compile, run, create projects, you can do that from the CLI uh, from Expo. Another interesting thing is a Snack. A Snack is like uh, an on-the-fly uh, development uh, of uh, React Native applications from the browser. Okay, so for example, let me show you that. Uh, yeah, here. Well, actually not here. I have my uh, Expo account here. Okay, I go into Tools and I run this Snack thing. Click Open Snack. Let me connect. So, for example, okay, here I have... Uh, I have uh, a tool that is very uh, uh, interesting if you are uh, using that kind of thing, this uh, visor is something that allows me to show my mobile on screen, okay? So this, this thing here is at the moment, uh, so my, my phone is, what I'm doing here is on, on the screen. So for example, I don't want to upgrade now. Okay, so let me, uh, I, I'm, I'm just using uh, the first sample that they provide on Snack, and I click run on my device. Okay, I will. Uh, the device ID, I already have it here. So this is the Expo uh, client, okay? It's a bit dark, no? Maybe Sorry? It's a bit dark. Yes, and I don't know why, but yeah. usually I shouldn't be getting that. I mean, let me try to reopen that again. There is an overlay. That <laughs> and right now, I want to build that on my Asus. That is much better now. Give me a second. Come on. Okay, it will not work now. Was working 30 minutes ago, as always. Let me see if I can get the QR code to work. I'm sorry, it will not show now. I'm not sure if it's because we have uh, the uh, emulators running here or what. Yeah, but that's not the one that I was looking for. Well, my point is that I have now the application running on my phone, okay? And you will not see that, but as uh, at the same time that I, I can change this uh, thing here, let me zoom that a bit. 
So this is uh, some text here. And I say hi, uh, DNN connect. Okay. And the moment I did that, it's on my phone. Okay. So the the, the good thing about that is that you can uh, prototype if you want some components here, and they appear right away on your phone, which is very easy. You don't need to compile, deploy, wait for it to go to the stores. That's very easy to maintain and to do. That's uh, I, I don't remember the name, but this this platform that you have on the internet to play with JavaScript and do um, demos online. That kind of things. Yeah. That's something similar to that. I mean, you can play with your React Native here, and you see the results right away, either on the emulator or on your phone. I'm sorry that I can't make that work now, but that too usually displays my phone here. <laughs> Anyway, back to the... Uh, and, the and the application is installed on, on the phone? I mean, if you now unplug, the application remains installed? Uh, that depends. Uh, the point here is that uh, you use this... Uh, what I'm using is the... Uh, sorry. I'm using the Expo client. Okay. okay? So you okay. can run the application from within the Expo client. But that doesn't mean that you cannot install the app. You, at the very end of the cycle of your development, you can create a, an installer for the app, and it will install here. Okay. And the other good thing about that, I'll go that uh, in the next slide. Well, sorry. Let me quit on that. Uh, that was the Expo SNAC. Okay. Uh, Expo SDK is uh, an extra set of uh, of native uh, API calls that you get for free when you plug your development into uh, Expo. So uh, some things that otherwise you would like to, you would need to go into finding some extra components to go to the native uh, access for, uh, for the accelerometer, the camera, all that kind of things are built already into Expo. So going into some kind of native calls for your apps, it's very easy done just by using the tools that are provided by you. Expo uh, XDA is the client that uh, they provide you uh, for... Uh, Windows and Mac all together. From here, you can create uh, new projects, run projects, uh, deploy and publish projects to the uh, internet, to your client, sorry, to your Expo uh, account on the internet. So, for example, if you are deploying your applications using Expo, the moment you publish a new uh, version, all the clients, if you want, all the, client, all the users that have this uh, app installed, the moment they uh, switch it uh, on again, it will get an automatic upload from there. So that's also a very interesting thing that you get for free when you're using Expo. The automatic uploading, uh, sorry, uh, upgrading of uh, apps. That's something that since version, since the last version, it was automatic. You didn't have control mm -hmm. on that, but I read uh, last week that they have switched Sorry, we changed a bit their uh, APIs, and now you can control if you want to do that at app start or app closing or on demand or whatever. So it's it's quite interesting. Mm, uh, what is that? That's the uh, XDA Expo Kit is uh, is something that they provide you when you want to still use all the facilities that they provide you in Expo, but you need to use. Uh, components that are, that are not directly supported by them. So if you need to go uh, native uh, on some uh, pieces, you can still use the facilities that Expo provides you, but use those uh, native uh, components, okay? And that's usually the life cycle of uh, an Expo project. You will start your new project either in the Expo uh, development environment or from Expo Snack, or from creating, uh, from the command line, uh, create React Native app. That's something that Christian will show you. You develop your app locally, you publish uh, your URL into your project uh, uh, space on their uh, servers from some way, and then finally, you can also deploy uh, as normal to the, uh, to the stores for Google or for, for and, uh, for uh, iTunes, okay? That's not, it's not that you have to deploy only to Expo. You can do the same thing you do with other applications. The good thing is that if you don't want to do that, for example, if you're creating 
an internal application for a company, you can just use the, their internal workspace and it will be there and no one will notice about this application. A couple more things that Expo provides you uh, automatically. Push notifications. That's something that they will give you all the infrastructure you need to give push notifications from the apps to your uh, servers. Uh, over the air updates, I already mentioned that. They provide extra components. I already mentioned the Expo kit. And that's more or less a very uh, quick introduction of what are the toolings, uh, the tools that you can use. React, React Native, uh, Expo. So if you set up that, in 30 minutes you are done and running, preparing your uh, new applications. A piece that is a bit more complex, somewhat, is the integration with DNN. Uh, not, well, not really complex because you will be using uh, the services framework uh, that the Ajax calls that we are used to do in the browser. So that piece is exactly the same. The same JavaScript that you're using on the browser when you're using React.js to call your uh, services framework calls, it's the same thing that you'll be using here. The only piece that is different, obviously, is that you need to authenticate if you want to create uh, secure applications. So for that, you need to use, uh, well, you, need, you can use other things, but DNN provides the JSON web token approach. It's a bit tricky to get it working sometimes, but usually, uh, well, the tricky part is the token renewal. There is a project uh, done by Peter Donker on the DNN Connect uh, GitHub that has uh, all the token renewal implemented. It's a bit tricky because you, you never know when your app will, uh, we'll need to renew the, the authentication token. Well, actually, it's uh, one hour, I think. Yeah. It's one hour, yeah? So you can be in the middle of, a, of trying to make a call and the token is expired, so then it will fail. So there is some tricky uh, building, uh, plumbing that you need to do to make that, that work. So, uh, is it on the client or is it on the server side? The that did? On the client. On the client. Yeah. yeah. But that's tricky because, I mean, you, you might be pushing a button yeah. and expecting a call to go to the server, but then the token is done. So if you don't do anything, the, just, the call just fails. It fails miserably. Because that's the, that's the only thing I, I, I don't really like about this, that it should be much more automated. So you have to do all the plumbing yourself on the renewal of tokens. So JWT uh, is, uh, uh, well, I'm not sure if I should call a provider or a module. Well, probably it's a provider. You install this. Uh, usually you will get that into the provider's folder, the provider's uh, the install provider folder, resources. There is a file there, which is this thing. You just install this thing. It's very easy, no configuration at all. You need to provide a few uh, extra lines on the web config, and you're done. You have uh, a system. Uh, that makes your DNN ready to be authenticated from the external parties, which is mainly, uh, in this case, uh, the mobile. Then there is uh, this uh, call, the uh, login, that's a services framework call. We are used to be doing that. You pass the user and password, and you get a token. Well, actually, you get three things. You get the, the user that is connected. It's big enough, this thing. You get the, the display of the user connected, you get the access token and the renewal token. That's the piece you need later on when you notice that your app is not authenticated anymore. You need to pass this token to the server and they will provide you another access token that you will be used from then on. Okay, when you have that, the only other thing that you need is when you make a page request, just use the typical authorization beer token and you're done. So, not that difficult in that sense. Okay, the only difficult part here that we found is the renewal piece, mm -hmm. but it's quite well documented here, and it works pretty well. Question: When you're working in the uh, in the browser-based tool, hmm. do you have to worry about the cross-origin uh, like ports? Mm, that's uh, something that I can't really reply. Uh, I don't really know. We have not used that browser any much more. Most of our testing, we just have the devices attached right. and, and try it there. Okay, uh, and with that, I'll give uh, the control to Christian and we'll show you a few more examples. Sizes and things like that. 
things like that on React Native? Like, that For the moment, we've not really been into that kind of thing. I mean, the the, the apps that we we built so far are mainly for uh, an internal application for a company where we even have our specific devices. Okay. That's an industrial device with some barcoding and so so we know pretty sure that this thing this will work device, here. Yeah. So we are we are not building consumer uh, consumer applications, but okay. let's say that way. Okay? We are not into that kind of thing. So probably uh, well actually I, I don't really know. I am I'm, I'm sorry but I can't really tell you that. We are mainly building applications for for a company that it's, it's that's uh, an internal solution for a company. And we know pretty sure that it will work here, so we are not that into. It. But we've been actually we've been using that into another device, which is double that one, and it just uh, adapted pretty well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So what what do you do? We need um, to set up um, our uh, development environment. We have two options. If you if we want to use Expo. It's easier. If we don't want to use Expo, it's a bit uh, a bit trickier. So uh, with Expo, um, you only need uh, no Node.js. Um, the 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 editor recommended by uh, by React Native uh, documentation is uh, Visual Studio Code. That's uh, Tenior that uh, Visual Studio, uh, I find that it's easy to to learn and use. Um, there is an extension uh, that helps uh, writing JavaScript that uh, is AS uh, Lint because um, it gives you um, uh, hints about syntax errors and and so on. And then. Uh, if you want uh, to use an emulator or something like that, uh, you need to install um, Android Studio to create uh, the emulator or um, Xcode that provides the, the emulator for free. And that's that. That's all. Uh, with Expo, that's the setup we need. And then uh, to create uh, a project, a uh, project skeleton. Uh, it's as easy as um, uh, installing a little tool uh, that's uh, um, from React Native uh, people, I think. And then um, you execute uh, your command and you, you have, uh, it generates uh, a skeleton for, for starting your application. That's for uh, when you want to work with Expo. Most of the tools here come as a node module. So if you're used to use a no mm -hmm. node, that's more or less the same thing as always. So okay, uh, you execute that, and then you have uh, prepared your project for starting and 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 then developing. If you plan to don't use Expo, it's a bit trickier. So you need. Uh, well, if you plan to to um, to do Android, you have you have to to install Node.js, um, Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's recommended to install um, some extensions uh, to the Visual Studio Code. That's uh, React Native tools that uh, helps uh, in compiling, and it's more easier. You don't have to to go to the command line and write commands to to compile. Uh, so uh, to install uh, the Android, uh, you uh, you need it's not optional here. Um, the Android Studio, uh, Java SDK, um, Android SDK. Uh, it's uh, it's for compiling the the application. And if you plan to use, uh, um, if you plan to develop for iOS applications, you need uh, a Mac OS. And, and the same, the same for Android. Uh, Node.js, Visual Studio Code, and, and in this case, uh, you need uh, the Xcode for compiling also. So uh, here, 
is, is the command you will use uh, to create a skeleton um, to start your project. So that that is okay. So I'm going to show you um, some examples how it looks a uh, React Native application. So, um, when you start developing a, a React Native application, uh, you find uh, yourself that um, you have to develop, um, well, you have some, com com some components uh, provided by, um, by React Native uh, by f uh, for free, that you don't have to download uh, any component, and, and like could be, for example, uh, inputs, um, the view. Uh, so let's have a look. So here, the components. Here, uh, and on the left, we have um, a list of the components provided for free uh, by React Native uh, libraries. So uh, that could be <coughs> basic things like uh, lists, for example. Um, could be uh, uh, buttons, um, images. Uh, models um, that comes for free, but uh, if um, there are some um, set of components that you can download uh, that um, uh, get the things easier. So, uh, for example, if you want um, uh, to do, for example, um, fan uh, fancy uh, components that looks. Um, for example, it's, it's like a bootstrap on, on CSS. You have um, some CSS written for you, and uh, you, you reuse um, that CSS to make your applications with, uh, uh, with a look that, that is OK. You don't have to write uh, all your CSS to, to, to get a look that, that works. So um, that is. Uh, that is, for example, the case in, in the React Native uh, of nati nat Native Base. That, that is a set of components, uh, just like Bootstrap could be, uh, that provides you uh, some, some things that, mm, is, um, uh, that is more easy um, to reuse and, and set up your application. For example, uh, that could be. Um, a styling for for um, header, for example, or or if, if you want to add a footer, uh, things like that. For example, um, here uh, we have. Okay, this shows examples uh, like. Um, if you want to add a button uh, to your header, or if you uh, if you want to 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 do custom headers, um, uh, headers, footers. Or, for example, uh, buttons. Uh, when you when you start developing your application, you will see that uh, if you want to uh, use a component button, uh, doesn't have any style. Any style. So you don't you you do have to um, to provide your own styles to buttons. There are, there is no default. So you have to do your write your styles and and 
that's why it's, it's useful to use mm, that's comp that, that set of components because you have uh, some predefined styles for free. For example, for buttons is, is, uh, is a good example. So, uh, okay. That will be more examples. Mm. This is just uh, another sample of components that you can download from somewhere that help you a lot on improving the, the quality of the, of the user interface. That, that's mm -hmm. mostly it. Yeah. So how it looks on the inside. Okay. Our application starts uh, from, from here. <coughs> And then um, uh, you have to set up your. Um, Can I just go back to the previous one? What? Well, the, the previous one to the ah, yes. Ah, yes. This is the starting point, and notice the first two lines import. That's the way React, uh, React, not React Native, React uses to uh, actually import components that are defined in other places. So here we are using uh, a component which is called the app registry and another component which is called the app. And in this main component, the one that's called app, is where is in this case, is where the app will start. So notice that by importing, the, on the second line, importing the app, then we can call uh, some methods, like, well actually the second one probably comes from the first one, which is the register component. And well, actually I'm not sure exactly what this does, but. That's the idea. You you comp you make components that have some built-in uh, features, and then you can reuse somewhere else there. So uh, now this is the starting point, and he'll show you uh, on the app where what is there. So again, here the same thing. It's a very simple component uh, that they decided to do it that way. Uh, it's exporting the, the 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 third line export the class app. That's the name that you can then reuse into other components. And in that case, what it does, it just renders another component, which in this case is the setup that, again, is imported from another place. Mm -hmm. So here. OK, in this case, uh, it is a component that uh, provides the styles. So that mm, they decided to do this in this example, but it's completely completely up to you. So, for example, uh, if you go to the app to this app component, we'll see. Okay, here is where they uh, import um, all of the components that are programmed for for, for this example. And below we have the screens the screen uh, the screens that uh, the screens also are components so when when you when you decide to do a new screen you you will be writing uh, another component so, so it's all about components that's the navigation thing And here we call the the stack navigator navi navigator that that is defining uh, each um, each component related to to each screen. The stack navigator in, in this case is the the left menu that he was opening before. Yeah. Uh, this thing here. So we just you see you can reuse this stack navigator, provide them the menu items that you want there. And you have a full navigation, which is uh, very natural to, uh, in this case, to Android users. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I want to see the app navigator now. Uh, okay. Um, another thing that's that's useful, uh, for example, I found that um, 
here we don't have CSS to, st to style our thing, so it, it has uh, something similar uh, to style uh, our, our lookings. So we have uh, resemblance um, CSS, but it's not. So, uh, for example, if you want to position things on the screen, um, uh, React Native uses uh, the same approach that uh, uh, in CSS we have the Flexbox. So, uh, <coughs> sometimes uh, if you are not used uh, to, that, um, to that approach using Flexbox, uh, for example, um, that's my case, um, you can you can find components that help you, um, for example, to use um, to define um, columns or rows, or for example, to to be easy uh, to position your things on the screen. Uh, this set of components includes, uh, for example, uh, one thing that they call layout. So, for example, um, if we go here. Here, um, we import uh, one component that's grid and another component that's call. That, that will be um, um, to set up uh, on our screen uh, a grid with, um, with three columns and, and define its sizes. And, and for example, this will be this example. Stone call. Here, the sizes, for example, are uh, relative. That that doesn't mean that it is one pixel or one column. Well, it's actually, it's one column. You have to sum all the numbers, so it's four plus two plus uh, one, so that would be seven. So you can think of a grid of seven columns, and from seven columns, the first one will be uh, take a one uh, one percent of the real estate, then the second, uh, well, one percent of one uh, one uh, one seven of the state. Mm -hmm. two, se two sevens of the state and the rest four. So it's, it's kind of uh, the usual grids that you're used to using CSS. The only thing is here that you define your the number of columns that you work with. Yeah, so that's, the, that's it. And then, uh, well, I, I don't know if... Uh, well, here we have uh, pickers, for example. Or radio buttons. Well, that, that will be um, all, the, the, all the components. Just the, notice what I was telling you before, that uh, if you're used to develop on, on HTML and React uh, JS, those components that you have here, are not the same that you would use uh, in your uh, browser applications. This is specific for the uh, for the apps. So those grids, uh, bodies, titles, whatever, they are components specifically designed for the uh, for the um, for the devices, whatever they are. So again, uh, make that switch that this is not code reused from your browser applications to the mobile. This is mainly the mindset that you're using and the, the, stay, the style of developing. But what you are reusing for sure here, in most of the cases, is the, the, the cross-platform development. This app that uh, we are showing here, uh, it, it's completely, uh, well, I'm not sure if that's the case on this one, but I would say that it's 99% 90, 90, uh, the same code on uh, iOS than on Android. So by developing on a single uh, place, you get a, a cross-platform a cross uh, environment, okay? okay that's let, me, let me show you uh, something else. I think we have still some minutes left. Yeah. Let me see if I can play a bit more with Expo, and you'll see how that works. So let me shut down couple things here. That's the Android uh, emulator. 
So where is that thing? Yeah, here we have the, uh, that's the Expo uh, client, sorry, the Expo uh, SDK interface, okay? So from here, I can create uh, a new project. Uh, I will use that uh, template. I'll give that uh, a name, create this thing. Let me close a few. Uh, that takes uh, a while because it's downloading a, a ton of uh, node modules. So you're used to that. You see that downloading some modules takes a while. But the moment we do that, you'll see that uh, it's uh, just there. So if you, uh, well, the other thing about that, which is interesting, is that you, if you're using uh, testers for your, uh, for your uh, developments, you can give them access to the uh, to your well, not, not really to your account, but you give them access to uh, the to the apps that you have provide uh, published uh, here, and then they don't. You don't need to. How can I say that? You don't need to deploy your apps into some internal servers or whatever. You just provide them a URL and they will be able to download directly from here, provide you your testing environment and whatever, okay? And that's another way to improve the, uh, the way you're uh, deploying internally your applications. So let me see if that uh, finishes. Okay. So for example, now I can share that thing. And let me see if that will work. I had some problem with the network before. I'm not sure if it will work right now or not. No, there, uh, there is something wrong with my phone today that can connect uh, into this right now. But uh, that's probably Yeah, the one thing that you need to do when you're uh, when you have created your project here is that you publish that. Now it's uh, doing some some work over there, and at the very end you will get a, pub a public uh, URL that you can send uh, by email or just by this uh, QR code here. Okay, you can send that to your testers, to your internal users. Then they just click on this uh, URL, download the Expo client and they have the uh, thing on their device. Then the moment you provide new updates uh, on your site onto this application, they will get the new versions of the app uh, without doing anything extra. So that's a very good way of deploying that kind of things. I have a question. Is yeah. In the Expo client, is that really a native or is it rendering in a web view? Or I think it's native. Yes. Yeah, native. The, the only thing that... It, it, well, you need to consider is that if you're using uh, Expo, it will attach some extra SDKs into your app. So the app is a bit bigger. So if you compile without using any Expo stuff, the app I don't know, can be a couple megabytes, whatever. If you're using the Expo, you attach to it all the uh, extra things that Expo provides. So the, the bills are a bit bigger. But apart from that, it's uh, native the Validated same way. Functionality absolutely. Work within that yeah, absolutely. That's great. Let me see if that finishes. Okay, so notice here that, well, you can't really see that. I can't zoom it. But the idea is now that I have a URL here that I can send to whoever I want. Okay? If you used, if you had your, uh, well, actually, let me try. You open your uh, Expo client on the, on the, on this thing, and here I have my app. Okay, this is the app that I just created on the, on the thing, and not, I'm not sure if well, you probably let me see if I can, make that happen again. Let me try again. This this app. If I can connect <coughs> that. I don't want to upgrade now. <laughs> Come on. <coughs> oh, 
Okay, okay, so this thing here is now my mobile. So now notice this. I will open uh, this thing on Visual Studio Code. Uh, uh, the app I just created uh, is, uh, let me see, where is that? Uh, should be, where the hell did I put that? Here, yeah. Project, uh, show in file explorer. Give me a second. That's my, that's my app. Yeah. Just let me, let me open this thing and you'll see how it works, okay? Give me a second. Open this. Uh, this is the new application that I created on Expo. Okay, and let me go to the main app here. Okay, uh, this thing here. Okay, uh, well, no. Where is the screens? Screens. Home screen. So notice this uh, thing here. Change this text and your app will automatically refresh. Okay, so we'll see if we can do that. Okay. So let me make that a bit smaller. Come on. Help it. There is some configuration thing that's going on. Not that good here. Should be there. Should be there. There is something wrong going on with my phone right now. But the the, the idea. I, I just tried that before the session. The idea is that then you can change your. Uh, your uh, code here, and right away you see it uh, on on this, which is just uh, the same thing that I see on my on my uh, on my mobile. Okay, but I'm sorry it went a bit crazy this <laughs> demo here, but that that things happen. So that's pretty much it. If you have any question, we might help you. Uh, anyone? Yeah. Do you know um, is JavaScript code? It's um, something compiled to X to C to C yes, for yes, it is. Xcode and to Java to yes, Android. Yes, it is. This is uh, again. This is not a, a hybrid application. So what is running on the phone is native code. And yeah. somewhere you can see the generated Java or the generated. I don't no. know. <laughs> no, I okay, don't know. Okay. There is some some code, uh, some folders here, but I don't really know, Sasha, that piece. It's not a kind of uh, virtual JavaScript machine that's running in, in the phone? What we're doing in, into another app that we, we're uh, developing is that uh, when we create in here, we are not using Expo, but when we are done doing that thing, uh, we get this uh, app uh, built somewhere, uh, outputs. And you just get the APK. You don't get the uh, the Java classes. You get the the final result, which is what you actually want. No, I, I don't know if it's uh, possible or not. I don't know. Anyone else? Well, give it a try. It's a nice tool and it makes things uh, really easier to to work with. Yeah. Is there something I need to do on the Android device to get the Expo client running? Nothing at all. You just go to the uh, Android uh, store, download it, and that's there. Yeah, nothing else. No, absolutely nothing. I have a couple examples here, but um, just you can you can give it a try. I mean, if you want, it's just a matter of downloading uh, this uh, uh, this uh, Expo client, and there is plenty of uh, different uh, examples. For example, uh, this one here. There's plenty of different examples that can give you ideas on how you can develop uh, native apps and use the full capabilities of your devices. You can get the uh, navigation, stop, bottoms, uh, left-hand menus. It's pretty uh, easy to do that. Well, pretty easy. You need to get used to that. I mean, the, the switch from browser to native, I mean, there is a step in there that you need to get used to that. But still, that's much easier to get to know another platform or develop in Java, for example. So in that sense, 
uh, I think it's a, it's a good idea. Yeah? Okay, thank you.